Hello and welcome to ASME.org's podcast series. This is Chitra Sethi, Managing Editor of ASME.org with Dennis Wirtz, the Vice Provost of, for Research and TH Smoot Professor of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering at Johns Hopkins University, where he also directs the Johns Hopkins Physical Sciences Oncology Center and co-directs the Cancer Nanotechnology Training Center. We are in Minneapolis today at ASME's fourth global conference on nanoengineering for medicine and biology. So you mentioned in your talk, metastasis remains an important clinical challenge for cancer patients. What are some of the factors that govern metastasis? Uh, metastasis, in a way, involves many steps. Metastasis is, is a cascade, a cascade of events that are orchestrated by biomolecular changes and biophysical changes. Um, metastasis is first and foremost, of course, a oncogenic transformation. You know, it always starts with a mutation, a mutation that the cell doesn't have the tools uh, to cope with, um, that uh, prevent uh, the natural death of these cells, um, and instead, um, because unable to fix this uh, defect, promote uh, growth. But that's the beginning. You can have uh, tumor growth without invasion, without metastasis. You know, routinely, patients can be diagnosed with non-invasive tumors. They can have even sometimes very large tumors. It's just that they can be surgically removed and this person is good to go. It's cured because there was never a metastatic disease in the first place. Mm -hmm. What kills patients, 90% of people who die of cancer not simply with cancer, of cancer, is due to metastatic disease. And that's the dissemination of these cancer cells that are proliferative um, from one primary tumor site to secondary sites. So the first step is that uh, tumorogenicity, this mutation the cell cannot cope with. The second is that most cancers, 80 to 85%, are really of epithelial origins. So epithelium is this monolayer of cells that cover the colon, cover the, 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 the breast, it's also the skin. So most cancers actually have this epithelial origin. And when they become cancers, they become carcinomas. Okay? So all those epithelial sheets sit on a so-called basement membrane. So the second step is now to cross this basement membrane and encounter this very soft um, collagen-rich environment. Collagen is by far the most abundant protein in, in, in humans, and it's, it occupies uh, this um, space between organs, uh, between, for instance, the colon and the next organ over, if you will. Occupying this space are typically fibroblasts. Fibroblasts will secrete the collagen and other extracellular matrix components to build up this uh, uh, dense matrix. The cells will have to, uh, these cancer cells that have now breached this bare membrane, will have now to locally digest this collagen matrix and get to a blood vessel or to lymph nodes to be then on their way to a secondary site. So there's many opportunities first to understand this cascade for engineers, but also really uh, map the therapeutic opportunities. And uh, again, tumor growth is not sufficient. Most drugs available are on the market for cancer patients really target tumor growth, do not target metastasis. Yet, as I said, it's metastasis that actually kills patients. There's a couple of uh, uh, exceptions to this. It's uh, brain tumors and ovarian cancers. Okay. What roles can engineers uh, play in detecting you know, metastatic cancer cells? How can they help in this uh, goal? So, um, in a way, what I've told you, uh, utilize here and there uh, very enduring concepts. Uh, the concept of um, producing forces that can help the cells move itself forward. Uh, we had to develop the tools to merge those forces and convince ourselves that was the mechanism by which cells could, in a way, explode the smallest breach in the wall to really squeeze themselves and squeeze even their own nucleus into these small pores. Um, it's utilizing novel microscopy tools. I had to be able to visualize cells from the side to be able to convince myself these cells were truly invading 
uh, kind of in the mindset direction in this uh, uh, collagen rich uh, environment. Um, so we had to use optical tricks to make it happen. And at the same time, and I think that's what the next generation of bioengineers are going to do, is not reject the biology, not ignore the biology, embrace it, but not forget the, the roots in, 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 in engineering and physics. Uh, I think there's, uh, first, we can help in the fundamental understanding of cancer, and then along the way, discover new therapies. One last question, where do you see uh, you know, cancer treatment ha you know, in the future? How, how will cancer be treated in, in terms of, you know, this was about attacking or the problem early on, but so where is it headed in future? Um, where it's headed, it's I think twofold. Where it's headed, it's really less emphasis on therapy as, I mean, we still need to make real progress in therapy, but in the long term, we're gonna have to make progress on diagnostic. Great. Thank you so much for your insights, Professor Wiltz. And this is Chitra Sethi, Managing Editor of ASME.org. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.